And in my mind, I'm like, you idiot. You have no idea my vast knowledge of Bitcoin. If only you could tell. Wait till the future shows. I will show you $95,000 Bitcoin. And your lips are just at a completely different. Uh, here's just a, a good breakdown uh, talking about the BlackRock recruiter exposing their manipulation and control exerted by financial institutions. Uh, he did just a, a really good breakdown of the James O'Keefe uh, tweet there where they they got someone on video uh, where he says BlackRock decides people's fates. Uh, it's not who the president is. It's who's controlling the wallet of the president. You got 10K, you can buy a senator. War is real effing good for business. So... Uh, <laughs> Uh, there's a little Hosky uh, reaction there. Got got to love the Hosky there. Uh -huh. All right, uh, so yeah, he did a really good breakdown on that. So if you want to learn more, check that out. Eric Wall. All right, well, during the CT minute, you saw me liking all those tweets with the the Black Rock leak. Well, that's what we're going to talk about right now. Uh, similar to what happened uh, with the Project Veritas stuff with James O'Keefe. What do we have? We have a deleted LinkedIn. Well, who's Sergey Varley? He's the guy that was in the video, and he has deleted. He has deleted his LinkedIn. Uh, he dropped the bombshell that exposed the recruiter. The latter revealed what the company takes part, in, which includes corruption, bribery, and encouraging wars. Since being investigated, he has momentarily deleted his LinkedIn. However, the same has reappeared online. Uh, the the journalist recently spoke to the recruiter who unintentionally leaked some of the company's secrets and how they essentially run the world without the public's knowledge. He said in one of the interactions with the uh, O'Keefe uh, ops operatives here, they don't want to be in the news. They don't want people to talk about them. They don't want to be anywhere in the radar. I suspect it's probably because it's easier to do things when people aren't thinking about it. We've been screaming about BlackRock for years. We've been screaming about corruption. We've been screaming about how the elites are trying to pull strings without people really knowing. Well, this is literally proof right there. So the more we talk about it, the more we put BlackRock in a thumbnail, the more I start shouting from the rooftops, the more we can actually affect some change because it's, it's going to be one person at a time. Okay, so <laughs> what do we have coming up? We have 4th of July. Let's mm -hmm. all be that weirdo that brings, look, don't bring up the Vax, okay? Don't bring up Hotez. Don't bring up UFOs. Just bring up BlackRock, okay? Don't bring up reproductive. Let's just br bring yeah. up BlackRock, maybe bring up inflation, yeah. and then see where the conversation goes. Because, yeah, we do need uh, people. Uh, this is a good sell zone, okay? Well, yeah. could be, could be. I have to look at that market but cipher B. Deezy, on July 4th, if your family rejects you, just talk yourself up with an inner monologue. Get yourself going. Mm -hmm. Keep pushing through. The fight is on. I mean, we yeah. got to, on a more serious note, like it is, like just so people know, like I, not, not that us talking about BlackRock, we're not going to take power away from BlackRock. BlackRock's very powerful, but they do lose power with people talking about them and, and the concept of what they do with their corruption. Yeah. So we need to keep that conversation going. Not that we are actually going to take power away from them in terms of long, long haul, but it does keep their power in check that they know that they're being watched and they got to think about their moves mm -hmm. a little more. They got to be more deceptive when they want to crush people. So, all right. Well, uh, here we have, uh, just in with this quote right here. He talks about can you can buy your candidates. First, there's senators. These guys are effing cheap. You got 10 grand, you can buy a senator. You got 10 grand, you can buy a senator. I could give you 500K right now. No questions asked. Are, are you going to do what needs to be done? It doesn't matter who wins, they're in my pocket. I want to do it again. The price of bread, literally everything goes up and down. This is fantastic if you're trading. Volatility creates business opportunity to make profit. War is real effing good for business. It's exciting when shit goes wrong, right? This guy's evil, man. This guy's evil. And he's not even one of these like 80-year-old octogenarians that, you know, well, I only got five more years on this world. I don't care if everyone's eating crickets in 10. This yeah. guy's like, you know, looks like he's closer to my age. And so just to see him... Just so blithely working with the elites, it's uh, it's frustrating. Do you think that guy has inner monologues, Easy? Um, it is the same noise as a cricket's leg. You know, it's like insects chittering. I don't know. Maybe this quote was an accidental inner monologue that he accidentally it, said out it's, loud. It's the crag, crab clicking noise of the predator. That, that's that's what his inner monologue is.
DeFi stablecoins, DeFi likely to be SEC's next target in U.S. crypto crackdown. Uh, stablecoins and DeFi are likely to become the next targets uh, of the SEC on the crypto industry. Berenberg said in a report on a Tuesday, uh, they're looking to reduce the potential for unregulated DeFi protocols to serve as viable alternatives to regulated lenders and exchanges. Then they could target the stablecoins that serve as the lifeblood of DeFi. Uh, Baron Bergs also said uh, the USDC is targeted uh, by U.S. regulators. The impact on Coinbase revenue could be significant, noting that first quarter 23, they generated $200 million in net revenue uh, from interest income earned on USDC reserve. So they're, they're crushing it, uh, making their little yield off uh, you know, some of these larger institutional DeFi protocols there. Um, yeah, so DeFi, rate this niche. How is DeFi going to do? All right, so we got two competing narratives here. We have the narrative that it is a better system. And then we have the narrative of regulators hate it because it's unregulated. And so these two systems are going to be at battle. BlackRock is seemingly signaling they want to backdoor their way into you know flash loans and DeFi, but they're going to signal that it's bad. And so to me, this is ultimately... DeFi will win because BlackRock wants it to win. And I don't, I don't mean to sound jaded right here, but I, I think that is what's going to be the, the, the pivotal point. Because what did we see right before BlackRock, Fidelity, all these ETFs? We saw Coinbase action from the SEC. We saw Binance US action. So we saw this huge FUD campaign while institutionals, uh, investors are pouring in. I think we're going to see the same thing. We're going to see a FUD campaign on DeFi and stablecoins. Meanwhile, they're going to be rushing in. And so uh, me... I, I think DeFi will win. What, what do you think? Yeah, yeah, I, I, I think so. Uh, it, there's a lot. There's a lot still to unpack. I mean, even with the stablecoin conversation, DZ, I don't know if we have time on the show today to do it. But sometimes, like I, I maybe we'll have to do something down the road with special memberships to hear certain conversations we have behind the scenes in our prep. Because DZ and I talked for I don't know, like what, ten minutes before the show, going back and forth on what Bitcoin's price is going to look like uh, with all of these new ETFs coming out. Then we're also going to talk about what what stablecoins going to look like. Uh, I don't know. Do, do you want to get into some of that conversation? You want to save that for another day? Uh, we'll save it. We'll save yeah. it. It's already past twelve thirty. We still got a XRP yeah. and a potential Q and A. They cannot measure my power level. Ha! <laughs> Wrapping that point up, though, I, I think that that stablecoins are going to play a significant factor. The question is how regulated will they? How regulated will they be? What will they look like? Will we see a lot of actual stablecoins, or will we see a lot of uh, you know, CBDCs that operate like stable coins. There's a lot of question marks we still have about what the future looks like. Yeah. So got to kind of wait for that.